QuickBooks Online 2023. Adjust opening balances. Get ready to start moving on up with QuickBooks Online. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We started up in a prior presentation using the 30 day free trial. We also have opened the free QuickBooks Online test drive sample company, which if you want open at the same time, we recommend using the incognito window or another browser. You can get to the incognito window if using Google Chrome with the three dots in the browser, new incognito window, and then search for QuickBooks Online Test Drive. We'll be using the sample company to look at the difference between the accountant view, the view that the Get Great Guitars will be in, and the business view, the view that the sample company will be in. You can switch between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the views on down below. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course. Each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. We're going to open up some tabs to put reports in as we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle as the tab to the right thinks. Go into the reports on the left hand side to open up the big balance sheet report in the favorites. Noting that if you're in the business view, by the way, it's in the business overview section and then your reports can be found thusly. So let's go back on over, back to the tab to the right. We're going to go down to the reports on the left, this time opening the P to the L, the profit to the loss, the income to the statement, and we'll close the hand boogie up top. Let's do the range change starting with 010122 tab, 123122 tab, run it to refresh it, tab it to the middle, doing the same thing for the balance sheet, burger closed. Scrolling up, changing the ranging. 010122 tab, 123122 tab, run it. Remembering that we entered the data that we imagined was from our prior system uh, as of the cutoff date, 123122, so that we can start entering new data as of January 31st or January 1st, 2023. So we could see that prior data here. This is the data as of the prior uh, December 31st, 2022 from the prior accounting system. Our strategy has been enter each one, one at a time, letting QuickBooks record the other side of the transaction to wherever, wherever it feels it should, which could be to the opening balance account, which is an equity account, or it might have posted to the income statement, either to revenue or expense, the revenue when we made the accounts receivable, the expense when we made the accounts payable, the the, the revenue or accounts receivable using an invoice, the, the payable using a bill basically. But because we entered those in the prior period, December 31st, 2022, they will roll into equity. So the strategy then being, we've got all of our accounts lined up. The other side due to the double entry accounting system has to work if the other side is simply equity it's just gonna be in the wrong equity accounts. And now we're gonna have to just shuffle them around and fix the equity accounts. The main one being that opening balance equity, which is not an actual account, does not look professional, is not something you typically want to be presenting because people will, will, will have less confidence in your accounting system if there's information in that account in general because it's not an actual kind of financial reporting account. It's just a holding account that QuickBooks use so you can enter the beginning balances. Okay, so let's go back on over and recall this. So if I scroll down, everything should be lined up. What I'm worried about here or the only place I'm focused on is the equity section. So I'm gonna close up equity and just give a, a quick recap of what equity is. And remember what we have up top, what we've created is the accounting equation. Assets equal liabilities plus equity. So the assets are what we have, liabilities and equity represent 
who has claim to what we have, either third parties, liabilities like the bank and the accounts payable and equity, us. Therefore, you can also format the accounting equation assets minus liabilities equals equity, equity representing in essence the book value, the value of the company on a book basis. So if I was to uh, increase this, then we've got the balances on the assets and the liabilities. And then what does equity mean then? It means what we have claim to on the assets, the book value of the company. Then the accounts within equity will depend on the type of business that we are in, in terms of what the appropriate names would be and which accounts that we should be allocating the retained earnings to in essence. So the opening balance account you'll recall is just a clearing account. QuickBooks is putting the money into here, basically telling us, hey, look, this is where I just dumped the other side, which I believe should be in an equity account when you entered the opening balances. So that no matter what type of business we are, corporation, sole proprietorship, partnership should generally be closed out to some other account. And then if we're a sole proprietorship, we would be using an account called owner's equity because the whole thing is basically in one account, owner's equity. Although we might also have draws, that's the money that we take out of the business in order to, to help, uh, in order for our own business use or our own personal use out of the business. And we could add an investment account, money that we put into the business uh, rather than money that has accumulated over the business uh, from activity through the income statement. Now, if we were a partnership, it gets a lot more complicated because then you're gonna have multiple claims to the equity. It's owned by multiple people, more than two people, two or more people. So therefore you kind of have like a similar account down here as like an accounts receivable account broken out by customer. You're gonna basically have to have your partners and then track their balance in their equity account, which you might call a capital account and you're going to have to apply out your net income in accordance with the the agreement of the partnership and you might have separate accounts for each partner like a draws for the money that each of those partners take out of the business for personal use and possibly each partner's investment account so what happens with a partnership then is quickbooks will roll everything into net income you can you can see right here and then it will roll into some account on the balance sheet which they put as default retained earnings which is actually a corporate name but you get the idea it's the earnings from the income statement that roll in so if i go up and i change the date up top to uh 010123 to 123123 and run it you can see that that net income rolled in to retained earnings so that account we have to have some account that QuickBooks uses as the closing account. It's gonna close the income statement out into some account. They, they name it retained earnings by default. If you are a partnership, you're gonna to have to take it out of retained earnings and put it into the applicable partner accounts in accordance with the partnership agreement. So the partnership accounts are properly reflected. If you're in a, if you're in a sole proprietorship, we can just basically rename retained earnings to owner's equity, to, to, to the capital account, right? Because there's only one owner. So that's the, that's an easy situation. A corporation you would think would be more complicated than a partnership, but it's actually generally easier because the idea of a corporation is that we're not gonna break out a bunch of different uh, owners within the equity section the way we basically do with a partnership, but instead we're gonna break out the ownership of the company out into equal units kind of like dollars, a measuring tool of units, which are the stocks. And therefore, for the, for the amount of money that was invested in the company, that, that, the, that the owners put into the company, that will be a cap, the capital account, because we issued the stock for that money. And remember that a lot of times people buy stocks on the secondary market. This would be the primary issuance of the stock, the money coming into the business. And then we'll track the retained earnings, which represents the money that has accumulated in income that has not yet been distributed in the form of not draws, as it's called with a partnership, but dividends. The reason it's dividends and not draws, even though it's a similar kind of thing, is because you can't have one owner of a corporation taking out a different number of dividends than another owner 
base and you know they have to have the same amount of dividends per share basically so that means that you have to have some agreement when there's going to be a distribution of dividends there also could be tax implications and so on so we're gonna we're gonna imagine we're sole proprietorship here so what i'm going to do is i want to change the retained earnings to an appropriate name which would be something like owners uh owners equity so i'm going to go back on over and do our standard process to the first tab i'm going to go down to the to the accounting our standard process in terms of the accounts that are used i mean and by the way if i go into the business view that chart that uh general chart of accounts is going to be under the bookkeeping and then the chart of accounts there under the business view and then the idea being that if there is an account that's in use that is similar i'm just going to change the name and not add a new account now with this retained earnings account it's a super special account because this is you have to identify the account that quickbooks is using to close out the income statement you can tell what it is because like it's the only equity account that doesn't have a register it's it's you see all these other equity accounts have a register they have a balance in it there's no balance or register here because because this is the account that they're using to roll over into so you got to be you got to be quite aware what that account is i can't just make another account retained earnings i can't just add a retained earnings account that will function in the same capacity there's only one account that's that quickbooks is going to use to roll over into what i can do is change the name of it so i'm going to say let's edit it and say i want to call it uh i want to call it the name owner's equity owner's equity i think that that looks right right owner's equity and it's still going to be an equity account we'll put it in equity tax section retained earnings i'm fine with that okay and so let's just save it and so that is done so now if i go back to the balance sheet now and i and i run it again we've changed the name to be more appropriate for a sole proprietorship okay so that's that's step one and then step two is to get the opening balance to be closed out and then i'm going to put it into the the uh, owner's equity account so i'm going to zero out the opening balance account so i'm going to go back to the first tab and there's a couple ways you could do this you could do this with a journal entry because this would be the type of thing done with a journal entry there's no other form that is used to close out the opening balance so it's going to be a journal entry but you might go to the registers which which could you could do instead of having debits and credits and enter the journal entry that way and i like to point that out because a lot of times we only think of the register as something applicable to the checking account but you have these registers for each of the balance sheet account not the income statement accounts mind you because the income statement accounts are temporary balance sheet accounts are permanent but if i go into the the balance sheet account for opening balance equity i could say okay there's opening balance equity i can see the balance there i can use the register to enter the transaction and then i can see the balance as i enter the transaction so I, then i can do a journal entry notice the options that i have here a transfer or a journal entry we don't have any check or expense form or any deposit it's just a journal entry to enter a transaction to this and then we're going to say this is going to be as of i'll do it as of uh 12 31 2 2 let's say which is the day before our cutoff when we've been entering all of our beginning balances i might do beginning balance adjustment in the memo something like that it's going to decrease by the full balance which is seven two three nine six the other side is going to go into the retained earnings account that we now changed to owner's equity. So I'm going to type that in here. Hopefully it'll show up. Owner's equity. Owner's equity. I think that, is that the same one account? I think it is. Hopefully, it will, if, if, if it's not, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see it on the balance sheet. So what's this going to do? It's going to decrease this account. The other side, I believe, wait, this is owner's draws. Hold on a second there's owner's equity so owner's equity okay so the other side might say hey you're hitting the retained earnings type of account and it might give us a warning as we do that but and so that's a nice check usually because usually you don't enter a transaction to like the retained earnings or owner's equity account but you might do it when you first set up the the, the accounts so let's save it 
and we saved it okay so i'm going to go then to the balance sheet and refresh it again run it to refresh it and then when i scroll down now it went into the owner's equity so it looks like it did what we needed to do so that looks good so just to recap if i take this back to 010122 to 1231.22. We entered all the data as of the date of 1231.22, scrolling down. Then we've got the opening balance equity is now zeroed out. The, the uh, owner's equity is here. And then we've got this net income. That net income ties into what's on the income statement for the period January to December, 2022, or we entered all the data on 1231.22. The cutoff date from our prior balance information here that we're imagined came from our prior bookkeeping system and they put in services and other miscellaneous expenses when we entered the beginning balances for our customers and accounts receivables and our vendors for the accounts payable and that's where this 5500 comes from i don't want anything on the income statement but i'm okay with it in there as long as it's prior to the the date that i'm going to start adding new data january 1st 2023 because this will close out into the balance sheet. How do I know that? Because if I bring this up a day to go from 010122 to 1231, actually 01, 01, 010123, 123, and run it, there's nothing in it. So I've got a clean income statement going forward as I enter new data for the year starting January 1st, 2023. And if I go to the balance sheet, and I scroll up and I run this up a day, what's gonna happen is this, this, re, this income is gonna roll into the owner's equity account. So I'm gonna go from 010123 to 123 and run it, boom. And so now we've just got that one owner's equity account because it's the sole proprietor. Later on, we might add draws, the money that we take out for personal use and we might add like an investment account owner investment for money the owner puts into the business but you could account you could account for it with just the one uh owner's equity account if you so choose if you're a sole proprietorship okay let's now open the trial balance just to check it out in that form gonna go to the tab to the right right click duplicate and let's go down to the reports on the left hand side it's down right there and close the boogie and I'm just gonna type in trial balance. I think that's the easiest way to do it. And I like the easy way. And so there we go. Let's change the range from, if I go to 010122 to 123122, run it. There's our trial balance as of the prior period, 123122, the cutoff. I compare that, if I compare that to my data that we entered from the prior accounting system that we are imagining, then there we have it we've got the 25 the 25 the 20 the 25 the inventory the accumulated depreciation furniture and fixture 15,000 for the accounts payable the visa the loan payable and then opening balance is now at zero and then equity should be at the 77 896 and it's different here because we've got those two income statement accounts in our trial balance remembering that the trial balance is the income statement on top of the or the balance sheet on top of the income statement 72396 plus 20500 minus the 15000 there's the 77896 if i bring this up a day what's going to happen is these income statement accounts are going to roll into the equity and we should match so I'm going to change that. It'll be magical. It'll be a magical moment. Get ready for it. 010123 to 123, and then run it. And then there we have it. So now it's all in the one report and we, we're matched up. We're good to go as of the new uh, period. So as of, as of January 1st, 2023, we're good to go. So if you're following along, you can check out your numbers. They should match our numbers here and I'll try to run a trial balance every time we close up so you can kind of check your numbers going forward. And if you're working along with the practice problem, we'll just keep on uh, adding stuff. Now we're going to start adding new data uh, into the system from this point. Mm -hmm.